get started. You cut the music and then it cut on, 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 the, on the desktop. <laughs> so you just play it right here. All right, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, I'm glad to see your faces and such. Um, but before we get started, and I start introducing myself and such, hold on real fast, let me see. This right Started um, and, 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 and uh, begin our acknowledgments and such. Uh, I want to do due diligence and definitely honor um, the, the land acknowledgement um, that we do. Um, Pasadena College is a learning community within the indigenous homelands of people who have been known as the Gabarino Band of Mission Indians of the Siskinanga uh, Village and Keech Nation. Tonight we acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from, the, from this land on which we gather. We also honor the legacy of the African dysphoria and recognize that the U.S. as we know it was built at the often fatal ex expense of forcefully enslaved black people. We are indebted to, the, to their labor and the labor of many black and brown bodies that continue to work in the shadows for our collective benefit. PCC and its faculty, staff, and students recognize that we are all simultaneously teachers, learners, and guests on these lands. This acknowledgement is a small part of an ongoing process of working to raise awareness about histories that are often too often erased or forgotten. To recognize our place in this history and to affirm our commitment to social justice, systematic change, and anti-racism. All right, so that's the land acknowledgement for the college. Now that we got that out the way, I wanna just take a little moment to look around. It's kind of dark right now, I can't see everyone, but I saw it before you came in. And first off, I wanna say, don't, don't, don't we clean up nice? Don't we clean up nice? Don't we clean up nice? Give yourself a round of applause in regards to this. Because uh, I, think it's, I think it's worth being acknowledged. You all look amazing. Hopefully you feel great as well. Can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. We're, we're good? Okay, good. All right. Today, we are amongst family, friends, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, teammates, colleagues, faculty, and mentors, just to name a few. And I wanted to take the opportunity to, the opportunity to welcome and thank you all for attending tonight's PCC Rice of Passage event and presentation titled Lose Your Daddy, Black Man and Antiquity being brought to you by the prestige daughter of Dr. Nana Lawson Bush. All right. My name is Jamal Walker and I'm a 10 year faculty here at PCC at Pasadena City College and uh, I've been blessed and have had the fortunate opportunity to serve as the lead and coordinator of the PCC Amen program and student charter, co-advisor of the, of the uh, Amen charter here on campus. So I've had the honor, honor of doing that with the Amen program has been around since 2019. Um, that was the first conception of the charter that was brought to the, the college. For, so it's just some historical facts for you all. Um, and uh, we're here today as a celebration and a gesture of support for these gentlemen you see before you in the front row right here. Looking all sharp and everything. Yeah, looking good, looking good, brothers. Um, I'm excited for the program we have here today for you all, and would like to challenge you all throughout the presentation uh, that you're gonna hear today is to uh, practice the following throughout the, the program. To listen intently with an open mind, to continuously reflect on how the information affects you and your community. Um, take the time to explore how the information made you feel throughout the presentation and also why. The question why is it making you feel that way? 
and then finally uh, establish some personal goals from the, some takeaways from the presentation and try to implement that to improve your community. All right, so hopefully we could differ between those three concepts and, uh, and thoughts and get it going. So before we get going uh, with the next portion of the day, um, I would like to take the time to acknowledge some of our institutional allies and community partners. All right, and within the education, we have some, we have some, some parents here, we have some administrators, we have faculty, students, and such. But this work is this work, this work is is work, but it's important work to ensure that our African American students and such are are progressing and meeting their goal. Okay, and, and not just meeting their educational goal, but developing as as men, uh, developing as uh, 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 fathers, uh, developing as uh, being better uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, understanding that. Very, very important, okay? And that's something that we try to foster within the program and the men program uh, here at PCC and also the larger organization of men that kind of the student organization is chartered from. Um, but to get started with some of our community partners, I want to thank um, the IEDJ, the Equity, Diversity, and Justice Division. We have Dr. Bolin in the back right there. Uh, thank you. That's our VP. Uh, taking the time to come on out. Uh, Koi Bang, uh, uh, she, she's our executive director. Uh, to thank her as well for coming out. Um, the the a MEN program is, is a program um, through, through, the, through the division, the, IED, the IEDJ division. Um, one of the impact programs, we have Black STEM, Fuente, um, Sin, and also Ujima that sits um, within that division. And uh, I'm just happy. Oh, there we go. I'm just happy that uh, we have we have great leadership guide us in that particular way with some of our efforts. Also, want to thank the men organization and leadership team. Okay, um, PCC is, is like I said, it's the program of of a men, the larger statewide organization. Okay, and and we here at Pasadena is is quite fortunate to have one of the one of the, the board members of the executive team here at PCC on the ground level helping us and engaging our students and helping us out, Dr. Trevor Brackett, if we could give him a round of applause. Hey. Uh, you knew Dr. Trevor Brackett as well, so that's a major accomplishment. Just himself, brother getting his doctorate degree and, uh, and moving forward, so very, very happy to hear about that. And it's also a benefit of having uh, a, a brother on the ground level where on the ground level with the students understanding that some of the challenges that our students here at Pasadena are going through, some of the support that's needed. So he, it allows him to be a better advocate on the executive board with some of the needs that we may need and such. So it's always a perk when you, when you have an a, a executive board member on your campus. So I want to say thank you. And that's a great opportunity there. Um, also, Jamal Brown, brother Jamal Brown, he's the program of where he's the main quarter co coordinator. Um, also, you may have recognized him because he's done. He's been working with Pasadena College for the last what, four years, um, guiding our, our 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 competition, our academic three hundred and sixty five competition, um, Black Knowledge Bowl. Um, uh, leading that effort, so appreciate you, brother, for coming down. Really, really do. And then, lastly, uh, well, not lastly, but next to last, uh, the counseling division. I got to give a shout out to the counseling division as well. Uh, myself, I, I am a counselor. Um, um, I understand the counselor, the counselor role in providing support, and advocacy, and we have a lot of, we have a lot of, uh, we have our hands in a lot of the things that that go on on this campus. So. I definitely want to give a shout out to the council division. I see some of the counselors are also <laughs> And lastly, so we can get going, because I'm trying to move through so we can get to the main person, right? Uh, last but not least, I would like to acknowledge and also bring to the stage our man assistant coordinator. Uh, I don't even like calling him assistant coordinator. He, he, he a coordinator. 
coordinator to get that work. You know? I don't even like titles because, yeah, I'm not excited about that. But my uh, brother, um, uh, Emmanuel Simpson, he's been with the program for roughly about a year now. Okay, he's doing an excellent, excellent job in his role. It's been a pleasure working with Emmanuel. Not, not only is Emmanuel an exceptional father, an exceptional father, okay, and husband and such, um, um, it's truly enriching the energy that he gives to this, to, to, to the brothers and, and, and um, just consistent energy, you know, and sometimes you serve as a, as a revitalizing entity for myself with my energy and such, with everything that goes on there with my responsibilities, so. I appreciate you, brother, and uh, I'm handing it over to you. The word today I was thinking about was, uh, was proud. You know, proud of you guys. Definitely. Uh, this age, you know, we always talk about that society, what it told at you guys. And from the first meeting, we talked about adversity. And adversity is going to come, and what you're going to do, and how you're going to adjust to it. And just being with y'all week after week. Being with you guys week after week, it just continues to see you guys go through adversity. To continue to see you guys fight through adversity. And so I'm just here that I'm very, very proud of you guys today. So if you guys, this is Young Black Men, can we stand up and give them a round of applause, please, for the effort and what they And even though you show up every week, definitely, uh, you showed up today. And that's half the battle of showing up for yourself. A lot of times life just going to life. We want my wife to say, life be life. Yeah. We talk about life be life. But it's, you got to show up for yourself. Them, them says a lot today. You got your, your, your grown man clothes on. And so, like I said, we definitely proud of you guys. You know, I'm definitely proud too because my son is here in the front row. And so he's going through it today. Um, seeing his growth. Seeing here. But just, um, yeah. And so, also, uh, my last proud, that's my, I had three proud, my, my next proud is my brother Brandon Lamar. We're we talking about adversity, seeing him grow. He's a young brother right here in Pasadena, running for District, district 3, uh, a councilman. And so he's really in the trenches too. And so we wanted to give him this opportunity and to just come and just share you know, his campaign, just, just what he's doing in the community. We had some slides, but we had a few technical difficulties. but. Um, one thing about Brandon, Brandon always gonna show up. And Brandon always gonna be Brandon, you know, no matter what happens. You know, he didn't have issues with the police, everything, courthouse, different things, housing, you know, anything in the past community, Brandon's here. So it was a privilege and honor for him to come speak. I call him a young MLK, and you're gonna see when he speak, but can we just give a warm welcome to uh, my friend, Brother Brandon Lamar. What's going on, beautiful people? Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm here to learn, y'all, honestly. I'm here to learn. Um, but I'm glad to see you all. And do me a favor, real quick, just look down at your hands. What I want you to understand about your hands is that the blood that's running through your veins, what's in your veins has built this nation. And what's in your veins will continue to build this nation. And you have to understand how powerful you are. You're so powerful that will people, there will be people in this world that will try to tear you down at every single level. And it has nothing to do with them, but it has everything to do with how great you are. You are great. You're great because you showed up. You were great when you were born. 
Yes, I am running for Pasadena City Council District 3, um, but as I was sitting there, you know, some of us, we got discernment. And so that has nothing to do with why I'm here now, as I can see. But what I will tell you is this, 1992, a lot of you guys remember uh, what some of us may call the Rodney King riots. Well, I was born during the Rodney King riots. I just told everybody my age, so you can <laughs> age if you want to. Uh, but I was born during the Rodney King riots. And uh, I was born at this place called Killer King, King Drew Hospital. And I was born in the middle of the riots. In the middle of the riots, I was born. Three days after I was born, my mother, my birth mother, decided to give me up. And my, god, my godparents came and got me. And when they came to get me, they was driving back on the 110 freeway. When they were driving back on the 110 freeway, when they looked at their rear view mirror, they just saw a city burning up. Uh, purpose, right? At 14, at 14 years old, I actually found, when my birth mother found me, and when she found me, she wanted to see me. And that was the first moment in my life that I ever knew what forgiveness was. It's the first time I ever met her. Because I was supposed to be a statistic. Let me tell you something about foster care, and I'll sit down after this. Foster care is in every statistic that you would ever think about. Homelessness has the highest, foster care is the, home, the highest population of our homeless population is in foster care. The highest population of our young people going to jail is foster care. The highest population of mental illness or mental diseases are foster care. And I want to tell you that me, just by me standing in front of you, I beat every single odd that came against me. So why I'm running for city council is, has nothing to do with me. Growing up, my grandmother used to tell me, has, it's not about you. <laughs> I graduated, it's not about you. I got awards, it's not about you. I showed up in the community, it's not about you. And I want to tell you today, and no matter what you achieve in life, it's not about you. Because if you forget who you are, and you forget where you come from, then you'll forget your destiny. So. Do what I do. Every time I try to forget or every time I get lower, every time somebody writes something that's not true about me, because I'm in the public eye now, I'm running for city council, it is what it is. Some people like it, some people love it, most people hate it. And it's really because I'm for the people. Anytime you get the moments where it feels like life is against you, put your hands out and remember that in your veins, it's what built this nation, and it will also continue to build this nation. God bless you. I really do love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Brother Lamar. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, so now we're gonna transition into um, why many of us came here today. Okay, um, again, this is a celebration of culture, community, and definitely brotherhood. Um, so now it's going to give me a great honor to bring up our, our, our prestige, I was going to say our very own Pick Pasadena, but you know, he, he's done so much work with us, making you feel like I'm just trying to take him. But our prestige uh, 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 lecture today. Uh, Dr. Nana Lawson Bush, but first I'm going to tell you some things about him, okay? Uh, Nana Lawson, Dr. Nana Lawson Bush is chair of the Pan-African Studies Department at Cal State LA and the former director of UCI and Cal State LA Joint Doctoral Program in Urban Education Leadership. Rooted in Pan-Africanism, Nana Dr. Bush employs a Pente Pentecostal ev revolutional pedagogy, teaching from and to the spirit to foster a libertarian process. His approach to teaching is reflected in his research as he aims to co contemporary, oh my gosh, this word right here, <laughs> to, 
to, to, to, uh, to disrupt power relations and build programs, institutions, and states on the best of African philosophies and practices. His publications are numerous and impactful. He has published four books, including The Plan, A Guide for Women Raising African American Boys from Conception to College, and The Plan Workbook, and 32 other academic articles. Most notably, he published, along with his brother, Dr. Edward Bush, the first ever comprehensive theory concerning black boys and men called the African Male Theory. His research foci uh, substitute him as the leading expert on the relationship between black mothers and their sons, the development of independent black institutions in the United States, and the theorization of black boys and men. Moreover, his research has become the framework, the framework and guide for family programs and organizations across the nation. Building on a multi-generational family lineage of service, struggle, and education, Dr. Bush started his first independent black Saturday school at the age of 22 and continues to create black independent education spaces such as the Genius Project at Summer STEM Academy. He is highly sought after for his expertise in developing rites of passage programs which he has conducted for over 15 years, working directly with hundreds of black boys on manhood development. He is the co-founder and chairman of the board of the Commonwealth Unity Center, a 501c nonprofit organization headquartered in San Bernardino, California, that utilizes an African-centered framework and approach to educate, heal, and transform historically excluded communities by cultivating healthy families, organizing communities, and creating economic empowerment. Dr. Nana is a traditional African priest and a healer of the Akan priesthood of West Africa, yet he draws heavily on the basic teachings of his parents and, and grandmothers to guide him in his approach to his ministry on his ministry treatment of those whose society renders to be the least of us. He is the quasi-central quasi family man, as he often states that he practices African spiritual tradition, but family is his religion. Dr. Bush has received numerous awards. Most recently, he received the Outstanding Faculty Award in 2018, making him only the second African-American in history of Cal State to LA to receive such an honor and the Pan-African Studies Black Community Honors Awards in 2018. Without further ado, Dr. Nana Lawson Bush. Father 
of humanity. Who was your daddy? Who gave birth to everything we see? No one exists on the planet that did not come through. Most, most religions, I'm not saying I agree or disagree, said God created one man. Therefore, all other human beings come through your loins. That's something. That's something. That's something. That's something. Who is your dad? I'm going to show you a lot of pictures today. A lot of what people might call art. They try to put art to the side. I'm going to show you how important art is. If I told you to close your eyes and to picture Jesus of God, most of y'all might picture somebody white. Even though you may have never been told that God is white or Jesus is white. So you got that information how? Through a picture. Even though I can sit here and tell you intellectually how that cannot be possible, historically how that's impossible, you still cannot erase the picture, come on, bro, that's been put in your mind. That's right. So art is so important. That's why they take it out of school. They don't want you producing no art. Because when you produce art, then you put something in somebody's spirit forever. Even though later I come and say that don't exist, you go, yes, it does. And when I close my eyes, what do I see? I see the art in the picture. So I'm going to show you a lot of pictures today. Because I'm trying to plant something in your spirit that it can never be taken out. When I plant it in your spirit and I plant it in your seed, that means you're going to take that seed and plant it in somebody else and continue to produce another vibration. Constantly, y'all don't hear me talking to you today. I need some feedback, bro. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. Thank you. I came just for y'all. They extra. But I came. As soon as they called me, I was like, man, I can't wait to come. Tell me y'all had 35. I was like, 35? What the? So I got down to 20. You told me why. I appreciate that. But I ain't ready. So I do have some questions. It's going to be a little bit interesting. How many of you are trying to see what I'm doing? can name three black men slash African prior to enslavement, prior to colonialism and imperialism. How many of you can name three black African men prior to contact in terms of enslavement, colonialism, and so forth? If you think you can name three, raise your hand. Two, okay. One of y'all can name two? I don't need to know them, I just want them. You think you can name three? Well, I might, I might see, I might check. You not sure? I'm trying to. All right, let me hear. That's uh, a Good. Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu is shaky. I don't know if we know about him because, because of the war with the Europeans, but I'll take the first one. Uh, Mongo Park. Mongo Park? Where, where did he live? I, I learned about him in my African American music class. He was the first to write about him. What year? Huh? No, nah, so that, that wouldn't be that one. So you got one. So you had three? Yes, go ahead. Jesus. Jesus. Moses. And Abraham. Ah, you went biblical for me. We'll take it. The Bible's going to go back. But that's still a little, but I'll take it. So most of us are struggling, and I'm going to put that little bit on the struggle bus, but we can't take that for granted. A lot of you don't know that. You're going to cover that a little bit today. So what does it mean? It has meaning that most of us struggle with naming three African men prior to contact with those who enslaved you. What does that mean? It has some kind of meaning. What does that mean? It means that they erase our history. That's good on that. Yes. It means that black people have been truly colonized. Been truly colonized. Anybody else? What does that mean? Anybody out there? Want to help? What does that mean? Taking away someone's highest potential. Taking
taking away somebody's highest potential. Mm. Anyone want to build on that? Yes. Ooh, we are ready. Yes. Took our identity. Took your identity. The history is the biggest threat to We're going to show you why. So to say that you don't know any African or black man prior to contact is to say that you don't exist until white people come onto the scene. That your identity and your potential of being is erased. Close enough, right? So I don't, I'm not 
not just yet, have the $12 million. So I got to show over at the bank, right? I might not wear this to the bank. I'm trying to get some money. I'm going on the sun and everything, right? And then they're going to say, all right, I'm going to everything looks good, but we're going to have to check something first. What do they have to check? Your credit report, your financial history. They're going to judge my ability to handle money based on my history. I have to end up in this place where if you find yourself in trouble in court and you're about to get sentenced, what are they going to look at before they give you some time or not? Criminal your criminal record. Everything. Everything. Some of y'all might not care about this or not. When you have a partner in your life, some of y'all might want the partner to have a whole lot of history or no history. I don't know. But it becomes important to you. <laughs> Talking real. Can't bring her home to mama because she got a whole lot of history. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you that you use history in every aspect of your life before we say it's not important. And so people use history to judge each of you all. I go for a job. What do you gotta have? A resume. What is a resume? A job history. <laughs> Can't get the job. So being a black man, it's like having a resume on your chest that somebody else has written. Yeah. Can you imagine showing up to a job and the person that you're competing with for the job wrote your resume? Mm -hmm. What are they going to put on that? <laughs> what are they going to put on your resume? Whatever they, want. Whatever they want to put to keep you from getting a job. So history is very important. So as we go through these slides, I want you to remember history is important and the power of pictures. You with me? Yes, sir. Y'all with me in the back? Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't have a clicker, so I'm going to be moving back and forth. So let's just see how this goes. Ah, oh, who is that? How many of you will go to her house, kick it with her, maybe? Braid her hair. Hmm? Braid her hair. Braid her hair. You would do that? Would you just would you take her take food from her? Or would you how y'all feel about her? How is y'all feel about her? Most of y'all would be like, nah. Her name is she's a mommy water priestess. Mommy water is a deity of the ocean and sea. Now most of you would be like, hold up, homie, what's all that? Right? Most of y'all be like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm Christian, I'm this, I'm Muslim. We don't deal with people that look like that. Most of y'all say, well, come on, come on to our shrine house. Most of y'all be like, nah, I'm not going to her shrine house. That's some voodoo. Most of y'all would. Her name is Mommy Wise. But most of y'all do every day. Most of y'all really bow to her every day. You pay, you pay money to get to her every day. Many of you are addicted to her every day. Starbucks? Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. That's the shrine house. Yeah. That's mommy water. Then you stole your history. <laughs> but y'all, y'all, never mind when she's white. When she was, when I saw the first one, I was like, oh, no. But when I saw you heard, I was like, oh yeah, give me that, give me that. You don't even question it. Give me that, 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 give me that. How much they call ten dollars? Give me that, give me that, give me that. I'm gonna go study there, I'm gonna go kick it there, I'm gonna go every day. <laughs> well, you don't you don't know your story, they can they can tell you anything. But stole it right from you. What else are you missing? This is right in your face. I hope you're going like, what the hell am I missing? History. History is important. History is important. Y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. So we've talked about already. 
that black men, black men, black men, that black men, Adam and Eve, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. But that's kind of a rendition of it, to demonstrate that black men, you hear me with me? Say it with me, that black men, that black men, that black men, that black men are the fathers of humanity. The first human beings. The real answer to how old black people, black men, black people in general are is nobody knows. Like nobody really knows how old you are. The first full body skeleton they find in the Ethiopian area. Some people call her Lucy, but she's in Africa. I'm not sure how she gets a name like Lucy, but that's another conversation. 3.5 years ago, 3.2. That's a lot of, that's a long time. It's kind of, it's hard to even, even fathom that. So we have Lucy. Then we have later what we call the martyr human being. That's about 340,000 years ago. But again, a few years ago, they just said 200,000 years ago. Now they're saying 340. They had a sister in South Carolina who gave her DNA. Then they asked her permission to take a load of that. They ran her DNA, and that's how they found in the Cameroon the ancestor that went back to 340 thousand years ago. Before that, they were just saying 200,000 years ago. But it's hard to find bones in the Cameroon because it's wet, so they go away. So this is what I want you to take into your spirit as, as art. Africans, seven, eight million years ago. The green represents Africa. Very important. Take this with you. After this, you tune out and tune out. This is the martyr human being still in Africa. 300,000, 340,000 years ago. This is when Africans began to leave Africa. 60,000, now some are saying 120,000, some are saying 80,000, but they're African people. So listen, look, how long, they're nowhere else on the planet, only in Africa. Look how many years humanity was just in Africa, kicking it with nobody else but Africans. To me, what the heck? Europeans and others only come on the planet, and I couldn't draw it small enough to scale. Some say 30,000 years ago, but if you Google it right now, they're saying about 6,000 years ago. Six to 8,000 years ago. You have been on the planet in Africa all of this time. Who are your dad? Who, who, who's your dad? Who, who's your dad? That's how I had the audacity to have that type of question and stand on it and mean it. That don't get us a, a right to mistreat people, but things have to be in proper order. Honor thy mother and thy That thy days be walk upon you. That's honor your dad. Yeah. I'm questions at any time, actually. Who is that? Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Pretty bad dude, right? Yeah. Ruling the nation so yes. far, right? right? Yes. In the context of African history, African story, African leadership, Barack Obama is like the last man on the bench. It's like a nobody up against the African rulers. He wouldn't make honorable mention 
in the footnote of history. One of my coaches said, you wouldn't be a pimp on a good ball players. That's how they used to talk back in the day. Barack Obama wouldn't be that. He couldn't stand here with the African leader. Meaning he, he, he wouldn't be there. Had their own land, their own government their own educational institutions, their own religious institutions, their own armies. This is the first ruler of Kim. Anybody know what Kim it is? Yes. Can be. Now Valley, but more specifically, we say it's Egypt, but we say the Now Valley in particular, which includes Ethiopia. Good answer. Yes. Okay. We're gonna, get the, we're gonna show some folk in Ethiopia in a minute. Very good. This is him. Again, the pictures. The pictures don't lie. Norm talked about. First, recognize ruler, uniting upper and lower Egypt into one kingdom. An African, a black man. Imhotep, who's her Imhotep? What about him? Front row, down here. I remember the name, I don't remember. You saw him in a movie or something? Not in the museum, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. The first what? Very good. He's more than Dr. Buddha, that's a great answer. He, we say he's the first multi-genius, because he was good at everything. He performed the first surgeries. So I don't it. He was a sage, he was a wise man. He was a poet, he had flow, he had rhymes. A Renaissance man, thank you. <laughs> The first Renaissance man, just good at everything. But somebody read that last one. He was elevated to a medical demigod and later into a full god some 2,000 years after his death. He was also worshipped by the early Christians as either the first Christ or the first Christ. That's where he is. I'm not going to even explain that right now. I just want you to read that yourself. That's good. That's so sweet. Either the first Christ or one of Christ. Christ is a title, it's not a human being. Like Nana, my name, it's a title. He's anointed. Come to my a Renaissance man. Very good. Minakari. I just want you to take this picture in. Black man. They, ooh, look like some of y'all. <laughs> we'll let you read just a little bit. Time check, somebody help me. How many more, how much time we got? Look at that, they like Barack Obama. <laughs> and the mother looked like Don't she like Don't she look like uh, His wife yeah. <laughs> That's the best Agnotten and his mother Queen T <laughs> But That's Barack Michelle <laughs> Agnotten And that's the son You heard King Tut Agnotten is Consider the father of monotheism, the, the belief in one God. Now, that's problematic on a whole lot of levels, and even the people in, in Kemet or Egypt thought it was problematic because after he died, he was like, he was tripping, that's not how he did down. So they erased his image everywhere. But he really, it's hard to believe that, it's hard to really know if he really felt that way. He moved to 
monotheism because of political reasons. There were other priests that had power that looked at other deities, and so he was trying to consolidate. So he said, get around, <laughs> get them other deities, and let's just look at Atun, the sun guy. Now, this thing about monotheism, and then here in the West we go, somehow that's supposed to be better and more and more intellectually sound, or but that's some stuff they came up with. At the same time, they're teaching you God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's one, two, three. That's one of these. Plus some angels. You gotta be careful, they trick you. All the while telling you, 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 you're behind humanity because you worship more than one God. No, they didn't. They saw the many manifestations of God in the end. And if they did have more than one God, I would rather roll with many than just one all day. But you're not even allowed to think that. It's just monotheism is the best. And these people are heathen because they have more than one God. At the same time, they're pushing one, two, three. If there was a Moses, he got the concept of this one God from Kenny, where he spent some time. Piyanki. Check it out. Spit hard. What was that? Spit hard. Yeah. Piyanki. Piyanki understood holy war. He would take his men before war and they would go get baptized in the water, making them invincible before they would go out to war. He understood that this work came from God and a higher power. Very religious and very spiritual. Pianchi. Say Pianchi. Pianchi. Shabbat. talk a little bit about the God's Amun in a minute. But that Amun is the same word as Amen, representing the hidden aspect of God. This is where you get the word Amen. When you close your prayers, you talking about, I don't have this picture yet, I'll show them later, a God named Amun, the hidden aspect of God. And so many of these Pharaohs were dedicated to Amun, the hidden aspect of God. I mean, Ra, the light, and God moves into the light. That's where you get the God Ra. Same, but a different aspect of the divine. Hermetic. Son. A Shabbat. High priest of Amun. Holy men. To Look at that. I don't even know how somebody can even tell you that the Egyptians weren't black. I've been, it's everywhere. It's the one of the greatest spies I've ever told you. He's mentioned in the Bible. Hebrew people are fighting this particular group. They hear Shabaka is on the way, they like, uh oh, they get up out of there. They want no parts of Shabbat and his army. He pushed all the way into Spain. You see, in Spain, they have a city named Africa. Aksum, Ethiopia, the remainder. Look at all these people that you don't know. This is just one little tiny area of Africa. We're not going to go through them. I just want to show you that just look how many names have been erased from your history to leave you. Yes. Look at Kilburn. Kilburn. 
And I like this one to show you there's nothing new under the sun. He looked like a member of Jackson 5. <laughs> that's the sex thing. That's Tito Swint. <laughs> oh, hey, figure it out, bro. <laughs> Man, come on. But he was called the King of Kings. You heard that in the Bible. This is just what tells you Africa and Christianity are one in its origin. In its origin, not now. In its origin. Master Busa means king of kings. So it's not just, oh, Bible people just not heard king of kings. That's how African people train their leaders, kings of kings. Hannibal, the great warrior. <laughs> Still today, he was one of the first military people to begin to study the psychology of his opponent. If he had a hot head, he would devise a plan, suck that person in, surround them and kill them. If he had somebody who was more even tempered, he had a plan for that. And they still study him in military schools today. He was the one that went into Rome on the elephants. Sonia, founder of the Mali Empire. The way they tell his story, forgive me, this is how they tell the story. They said the mother was up. She had a hunchback. She gives birth to a son who they call Cripple. Different name. Couldn't walk. And the kids treated him so bad that he finally just like, learned to walk. Loses his father. The mother takes him away with the uncle trains him in the tradition and the history and the story of his people, comes back and becomes the ruler of the Mali Empire. I can preach that to y'all. Many of y'all come from situations that are ugly. Family situations that ain't mm, mama and uh, daddy. Mm, Foster, somebody talked about that earlier. Yet you have a destiny in Cornwall to be rulers of one of the greatest and richest empires of all time. The boy couldn't even walk. Some of y'all have been crippled by bad education, bad schools, and can't even read. Yet, the calling of your life is to be a ruler. Not to go work for somebody. Not to just make good grades. But to be a ruler. To manage the affairs of a nation. Yeah. Who's related to the person somebody else mentioned? Who, who, who knows it? Who, who gave me one name? Yes, yes. Master Musa. The richest human being to ever live. Master Musa. The trip is he becomes king because his brother liked to sail. His brother got like 2,000 ships. Sent them to what is now called the Americas. One come back. The brother's like, I'm out of here. Master Musa, you can be the king. I like to sail. And he go about two packs, about 2,000 more ships, and heads to the US. This is way before Columbus. He doesn't come back. We don't know if he made it here or not. 
We do know that African people were in the Americas before Columbus got here. Yeah. He writes about it. They went to Mexico. Hmm? They went to Mexico. They went to Mexico. Yeah. Black people were here. We can go deeper with that, but that's another lesson. Yes, sir. Master Musa. If you wanted to come up, you know what I mean by come up? If you wanted to come up, in that society, you didn't do it by selling. You came up by slaying books. There was a huge demand by books. Everybody wanted to get their read on. These ain't no small books. This is just what they found in recent times. There are so many books still buried under the sand. On algebra, on religion, on philosophy, on astronomy, on, 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 on biology, on how to perform medical procedures. People from around the world came to Timbuktu to study. Yes. Scholars came from around the world to teach, but this is what they would say. But we have no match for the scholars already from them. They sold books. Not rights. Books. Just making our way across the country. This is Zimbabwe. Founder. Again, just want to show you the many names that we just don't know. Which means we don't know what is possible. It's hard for you to conceive of what I just said, that you're going to rule a nation. I'm just trying to get us out this mud and get transferred. <laughs> we don't know what is possible. And history shows you what is possible. Founder. You heard that I was an Akan priest. The Asante and the Akan people are the same. I've been trained in this particular tradition. This is one of the original priests. He said he put his hand in the sky and a golden school stool began to drop out of the sky. And it's on that stool that the Asante Empire is founded. They said he was a Merlin-like figure. He was magical. And that's how the Asante people were founded. I'm not going to go into this, but clearly the people of the Nile Valley, Ethiopian, the Kemetic people, were indeed African people. Won't even waste my breath trying to prove that one tonight. This is important though, because I talked about the resume of black men and how you wear that on your chest. This is saying how people thought about black men in ancient times. This is saying if a purse came in here missing. They would rather say that it disappeared than to suspect a black man has taken it without blemish, blameless, that everybody knew this. They didn't get off the street, off the curb when they saw you coming. They didn't lock the doors. They welcomed you. And everybody knew this. Righteous. Godlike. Their piety, their righteousness was published abroad. Justice. A far cry from the resume we have today. Hell, we're afraid of each other. We believe the resume. Statistics even show we're the most likely to help people in distress. 
Somebody on the side of the road, we're coming. Somebody's in a firehouse, we're going in there to get them. Yet, we have this narrative of each other as the opposite. And then we believe it and act that part. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let's go to your daddy. Now, who is your God? Who is your God? In Africa, of course, all the gods were African. Don't you me? But as we began to move out and other people, Began to emerge, their gods are black. Meaning, they saw you, black man, as God. Both in the abstract and in the literal. Not God like that, too. But as God in flesh. When they did their art about God, it was that of a black man. Yeah. In the Asian cultures. All the cultures, but it's in the Indian too. So this is our men. I told you about. Mentioned in the Bible, this is the only place where you see the word amen as what we call a proper noun. Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. They was there as God, meaning with the beings that came into being, when being came into being, when God came into being, there was other beings that came into being, and we went witness. God comes into being all at once. And the Amun, the hidden aspect of God, was there to witness. It says right in the Bible, we go right over your head because we don't know by teaching that. But it says right in the beginning, in the R image, I know many of you are wondering about that R a long time ago, but it tells you right at the end of the book, Revelation. The true witness, the Amun, where you get the word Amen at. From. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. I ain't messing y'all up. Yeah. Pata, look at that bitch. My goodness. The ability to speak it into being. To say it and it is so. To create it. So if you keep saying in words out of your mouth, you're going to create it. What did you say? Look at these gods. Look at these geniuses. Anything you're going to create. A time the ability to speak it into being. Let there be light, and there is light. Also, Long. This is part of the first trinity. The trinity is God, the Father, Honey, the Holy Ghost. That's new. That, that is very new in terms of human history. I said Haru and Osa are the first trinity. You see this played out in the Lion King. That story is about that. Lion King, Simba, that's Haru, Mufasa, Osar, what's the, what's the, what's the girl name? Aset, Nala. In this story, the father is killed by Scar or Set or Satan. Haru has to come and save, comes back and fights Satan or Scar. 
and there's a monkey who's wise, who we call Tahuti. And Tahuti comes to, he comes to Haru. He's like, huh? I'm sorry. I got it now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I see the correlation. Um, just as uh, in the book of John, how um, John the Baptist hearkened to come to the Lord mm -hmm. of Christ. Just as how uh, I love you. Parking the coming of sin. Come on. This story is just retold. So they're fighting. Scar and Simba or Haru and Seth. And in this case of the ancient story, although there's many renditions of the story, Haru is about to kill Seth. But to who he comes and says, don't do it. We need that. So in the ancient mind, there is no devil or evil, per se. It's an energy that we call destructive energy. And if that energy overtakes you, we would say you were evil. But if somebody came in here right now trying to run up on us, and we got up by them, draw upon our destructive energy, set, we would need it. You just have to have it in balance. We have to have that energy. That's what the story tells us. But if I walk around here all day like this, right, just being everybody, then I'll be a problem. Y'all would say, he, see, he's evil. Because it's out of balance. But it's necessary. It's a necessary energy in the universe. Terms like toxic masculinity and all this kind of nonsense. There's nothing toxic about the energy of masculinity. Is that some of us walk around like this all day? It just need to be brought and have our masculinity brought in check. But you're not toxic. In all cultures, Hinduism, Vietnam, China, the Americas, Central America, and so forth. Look at the braids, look at the cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people, they try to say these 10 ton stones roll down the hill somehow. And God lips like a black man. <laughs> no, these are scholars. The scholars, anything, because any other time, they, the black man got big lips, all this, all that. Now suddenly they don't know. They can't recognize the black man. Right. You can see what that is. And this is in the walls of Central America. You see the Native Americans up top of the hat. You see it? Yeah. These hats look familiar. This is, this is in Central America. Come on. That's back to a side. Does it even look more familiar? Who, who stole that? The Pope? Oh, oh hey. Yeah. Pope, oh. That's the Pope. It's a great. Oh, I know. Is this your name? Go, I take it. Oh, from what I've learned, it's the, uh, uh, the fish hat. Oh, back in Nineveh, the people worshipped the fish god. And so then they used they used the image of that the fish to represent that hat. The Romans came and they took it for themselves. Mm. It could be. I mean, definitely you had the understanding of, of the fish, the ancient kingdom. Mm. And that's where that comes from. Others would talk about as the uniting of two kingdoms, the two parts of the hat as well. And so it could have multiple meanings, but the, the point here is that this is African. 
And we find these pictures where? In Central America. And we found that the Catholics pretty much just stole everything, not just throw him in for good measure, just to tell you that some of the early popes were black men too. We won't go into that, but I just want to show you. This, in real time, is how many churches portray the Madonna image. Mother and son, Mother Mary and Jesus, they portray him as a black man. In real time, even the popes bow down to a black Madonna and child. This, somebody went to Ethiopia, wasn't supposed to take this picture, but did. He sent it to me. All the disciples. Here again. <clears throat> Who is your God? All right. For these next slides, it's going to be silence. I'm going to spend about three or four seconds on each one. And it's the image of black men as God. And when we finish, I just want to know what it made you think about. How it made you feel. I'm trying to plant something in your, in your spirits. So take the pictures in. Men, yes, I want to utter another word as we go through. This so might do anything with the lights, but too late. So this is show a little better. Don't worry about it.
see a tear in your eye. It's all right. You did. What made you cry? Because it's kind of like uh, the identity, you know. Um, I've been a big, uh, I've been learning a lot more about so, you know, about biblical history and things like that, the history of God and all these things. And to see that, it's like, I am following you, all of my brothers. That's how it feels. It's nice. Somebody else, how did it make you feel? You know, I was able to hold it in your head. It made me feel like they try to distance us from, from God. Mm-hmm. And so this now makes you feel what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you think about? Purity seems to be passed like three or four. 
the early ones. You don't need someone in that to go. Just the early ones. Yes. Yeah. So when it did switch, when it did switch, let me say it another way. When it went on to the pictures of you, how did it make you feel? That hurt me. The trickster guy. The trickster guy is where they use tricks and jokes and traps to trick you back into your divinity. People like trickster guy, people get a little. But we find that throughout indigenous cultures, this concept of a tri trickster being. Anybody else when we transition to your picture? Yes. Uh, I love a lie. It was funny. <laughs> Why was it? Why would y'all laugh? What was funny? Y'all weren't ready for that? No, it's because the pictures. We ain't see everybody's pictures. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Um, it was not like funny in a bad way, but like it was, it was, it was uh, I, I'll say that, so to say, mine next to everybody's. Um, it felt good. It felt like I was a god myself. That's the point. Are there questions from anybody at this point? Do you have questions about anything in the presentation? Were any of the deities here? Um, some, I'm not for certain, but definitely in Kemet, we have queer deities 
what we would call queer. And then also, again, it was that, it wasn't necessarily one gender. Yeah, and they, either there was a male and female aspect of two separate beings, or that being itself was more than So I don't know if that many people put that under the definition of queer. We do see even some same-sex relationship in ancient Kenya as, as well. So it's there, it's more fluid. This is what we see now in Africa in terms of being anti-queer is more having to do with Islam and Christianity coming. And prior to that, people saw uh, people that were queer or multi-gender um, as being special spirit, that they had a special connect connection with the divine. But in a very practical sense, um, queer people might go sit with, with the men because they can understand both sides and talk about what it means to be a woman and so forth, and these types of, types of things. So it was positioned a lot different than how we see it today. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that terminology, but. Any other questions? About the whole presentation, not necessarily the deity. You said that they weren't supposed to take that picture or give you that picture. They, was that a picture in the temple? It was a picture in the temple. It was in a museum. Oh, so, you okay. know, if they take, suppose they take pictures of the flash and one of the pictures, so that a lot of people have no. Oh, I thought it was in a, like a special church in like uh, another country. In Ethiopia. Not, not that I'm aware of. I thought you told me it was in Yes, sir. Uh, I need to ask you a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that one? I forgot his name. I have to see which one of them you can describe. I forgot his name. Yeah, um, oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. Of the of the deep part of the ocean. So there are many deities in the ocean. So we talked when we started with Mummy Watson. And Mummy Watson is actually not a single deity. It's, a, it's sort of a name for a pantheon of deities. And so he is part of the Ifa tradition. And so different traditions would have different names for deities. They might be talking about the same one or different. It's the evil. So we talked a little bit about what evil is in the African framework. That, that concept of evil is not like how we think of it today. We would say evil has its purpose. And so there was nobody up there that was evil. Many times we look at these things because we've been raised here to go, that's evil. But there's nothing evil about that. And again, in the African way of thinking, we wouldn't think of evil in that particular way. It's an energy, if not used correctly, can do harm. And I have it, you have it, they have it, Baba has it, everybody has it. But if you can't balance it, then you end up evil. You stay out of balance for a long time, you'll be evil. But how can a divinity be evil? So you have to question why you had that question. Why did I take that in as a possibility of evil? Where did that come from? And many times when they depict African spirituality in Disney movies, we don't have the good fortune of being seen as nice. We have to be evil in the Disney movies, and therefore, when you come and you look at them, you say, well, that's evil. Well, no, it's because the Disney movies tell you that. Yes. What's the uh, frog movie? What is the princess of the frog? Princess of the frog. Or even in American horror story, all the time, yeah. You in the Latino community, their their deities get to be real nice. And this man has taken over this Day of the Dead. We celebrate it, and or well, let that be some black people. We'd be like, what? <laughs> That's evil. But everybody else is so nice, family oriented. But our stuff is evil, and they want you to think that it's evil. So you don't see yourself as equal to what I just showed you. So you won't tap into your divine power and you will run away with it. Because in Haiti, 
and use that so-called evil to kick some French. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta tell you, voodoo, juju, all that is evil, so you won't know part of it and go to church. I'm just telling you what they would say. You get mad at them, and you won't have that kind of power. But they said they shot the Haitian people, and they went down, and they got back up. They kept fighting. They don't want you to have that kind of power. They want you to say, that's Eve. And you run away from it. Ethiopia was never conquered because their priests were trained in the ways of demonic spirits. Their priests that were born in October, like me, they took them into a special training to work with the demons to whoop some Italian <laughs> and therefore never conquered. That's why I see so many of pictures on those slides. Say it again, sir. That's why I see so many pictures on those slides. That's why you see so many pictures on that slide? What is why? Say it again. Yes, and if you can, because you can't, you can't beat that kind of power. No nuclear weapon, bomb, bomb, no nuclear weapon can beat that kind of power. No bomb. No dad. No dad. Yeah. The Africans got invisible weapons. They don't, want, they don't want you to know, but I'm dropping it in your seat because when you go, you go, I want you to go there and ask them, where are the invisible weapons? Somebody told me, y'all got to teach me the secret of that. Thank you for your question. I 
I have no beginning. I have no end. You have no beginning. You have no end. You cannot be destroyed. There's no tyranny on earth that can destroy you. In fact, the gods are crutches to you. You need no God to tell you who you are. The gods obey your command. You are a human being. I'm a human being. I am my father. from my son. My son is me. Another representation of me, which is another representation of his son. Trying to get all the way back to the divine self. And we can't let these distractions of race and racism, food and music, it meant to distract you from being that. False doctrines, as people say in church, preaching false doctrines, as I say. So that's who I'm Great question. Sisters were in the back. Do I got any questions? I think I see. No? Comment? Nothing. Of, of 
20 men. Bring it out. demonstrate something to the community in order to have the privileges of being a man. It is my understanding that you all are new to this organization, but some of you have demonstrated that you are ready to be a part of this organization, and you had a few that are not. And so tonight, you enter the sacred space of rites of passage, having already passed through some things, but really to say that you are ready to go on to the next aspect of man. Nothing is done in Africa without ritual. We don't have time to go in deep ritual, but typically we would call on the divine, we would have drumming and so forth, and some other things to fortify the space that's sacred. But now, by the power that's in me and the power that's in you, 
we now declare his face sacred. The space where the gods dwell. So, as a symbol of you have made this rites of passage and a symbol of the divinity, I have made necklaces for you. Can I have some brothers come up and help? But there's one that's just a different color. That's gray. Instead of brown, which goes to the oldest. In Africa, the elder is always respected. In many cases, they would bow to the ground in front of the elder because they saw the divinity in the elder. You have an elder, even though he's just maybe two minutes older than you, that is your elder. And if he has been worthy, so it's not just that he or she is older, but they also have walked a particular way. Courage. And humble. Wisdom. So this brother does not deserve this. We won't do it today, but y'all need to have a conversation with your advisor and say, nah. We need to go to the second oldest, the third oldest. But I'm going to assume tonight that you're worthy. Are you worthy? Please. So. so put this on him. We have a cowrie shell. The cowrie shell is used throughout Africa. In some places, it was used as money. In other places, they use it as divination, the ability to see the future. It's used as protection. Women wear it around their waist for fertility. It has multiple spiritual uses. For you, it would be protection. I prayed into them that no harm should come to you, any one of you. Pray prosperity for you, for the soul, for the seeds that you sow, that they will grow into mighty trees. Go ahead and give it to the rest of them.
Lastly, I'm just going to come through. Bless you. Bless your legacy. everyone. All right. That was special. Definitely special. I hope you all enjoyed yourself. Uh, can, can we all give Dr. Ross a good Good night, get home safe, and thank you for coming.